would like to welcome Ola O'Connor to the stage. Uh, she is the director of the National Women's Council of Ireland. Um, ich sage das nochmal auf Deutsch, ich weiß nicht, wo Katrin ist. Um, genau, wir um, uh, haben hier Ola O'Connor. Sie ist die Direktorin von dem National Women's Council Irland. Das ist sowas wie der Frauenrat von Irland. Und sie wird ihren Beitrag auf Englisch machen und dann mache ich eine kurze Übersetzung. Hello everybody! Apologies, I've no German, so I do have to speak in English. But it's a real honor and a privilege to be here with you today. Last year I had the honor of being one of the three co-directors of the Together for Yes campaign, which through the absolute tireless work of feminist campaigners across Ireland and also abroad, won the referendum campaign to provide abortion access to, to women for the first time in Ireland. And marching and protesting and organizing collectively were essential elements of that campaign in Ireland. And that's why I'm really delighted to be here with you today to support the rights of women all over Germany to bodily and sexual autonomy. We know from our successes in overturning Ireland's ban on abortion that real meaningful change is not alone possible but it's absolutely achievable. And the feminist movement in Ireland stands with you, our feminist sisters and people in Germany, in Europe and across the world who are fighting for women's reproductive rights every day. We also know that such freedom has no value if it's not one for all women. And that's why the National Women's Council in Ireland campaigns for the reproductive rights of all women. Women of colour, LGBTQ women and people, women with disabilities, women of all classes and all religions. Our feminism is intersectional and it must be. It may come as a surprise, but countries such as Germany have acted as a beacon for Ireland in the past, when for decades we had no access to fundamental reproductive rights such as contraception or abortion. But we all know here how quickly women's rights can be rolled back and that the forces of the right across the world are chipping away at the freedoms women hold. Access to safe and legal abortion is indistinguishably linked to women's human rights values. Values that protect a woman's right to privacy, her bodily integrity, her right to be free from inhumane, cruel and derating treatment, and her right to accessible, appropriate and quality health care. And failure to provide safe and legal abortion consistently contravenes our human rights. Controlling women's reproductive rights is about controlling women and this is the case whether the restrictions are in Ireland, in Germany or in El Salvador. And as feminists we must shout from the streets as we are doing today that women must have the right and ability to make decisions about their, only lo about their lives because it's only then that women will be free. Until last year... <laughs> had one of the most limited abortion policies globally. In 1983, the referendum which was inserted in our constitution equated the right of the life of a fetus with that of a pregnant woman, which resulted in an all-out ban on abortions. That amendment was so reflective of a society that controlled women's lives, that judged women, to the extent that we forcibly took children away from lone parent women and we incarcerated them in large institutions because they did not fit in with the norm view of what it was to be a woman or to be a mother. Of course, the constitutional ban on abortion did not mean that women were not having abortions. Whether by traveling abroad or by using abortion pills online, thousands of women in Ireland chose to end a pregnancy. So the ban failed. It failed even from their perspective. But what it did do was it created really serious harms to women's health and well-being. While the Eighth Amendment was in place in Ireland, at least 10 women a day boarded planes to have an abortion. But of course they were the 
women who could afford it and the women who had papers to do so. Devastating psychological and physical harm was caused to women in Ireland in those years. And during the campaign, many women told me how they felt like criminals, how they could not talk to their families and friends because of the shame they felt and the fear of being judged. The ban disproportionately impacted on women who were already disadvantaged. Women with, no, with very little income, minors in state care, women with disabilities, women experiencing domestic and sexual violence, and women asylum seekers and women who were undocumented. All of these restrictions on abortion, whether it's in Germany or in, our, in Ireland, impact on those groups of women to a much greater degree. And thankfully, the people in Ireland could no longer stand for the situation and the harm that was being done to women. The movement to remove the Eighth Amendment was built slowly over time, but gradually public support increased, and increased to the extent that in one of the last marches before the referendum, our last march for the March for Choice, before the referendum was passed, over 20,000 people gathered on the streets in Dublin and, and throughout Ireland. We could, we could see the movement growing through the conversations that took place in cities and towns to create safe spaces for women to share their concerns about abortion. People in Ireland started talking about the unspoken issue for women. And in 2018, finally, when the Together for Yes campaign came together, we worked tirelessly. And I really want to thank you today because we so appreciated the solidarity that we received from so many women and men throughout Europe and globally. The campaign brought together so many sectors of society that had never worked closely before for abortion. Whether it was doctors and lawyers, they stood with us in solidarity at a time when women needed it most. But at the heart of our campaign were the experiences and the voices of women who were so extraordinarily brave in coming forward and sharing their deeply personal stories. These women opened the door for people across, the, across Ireland to understand the human impact of having an abortion ban. Courageous women show that abortion was not a divisive issue, but it is a normal and necessary part of women's health. The campaign resulted in over 1.4 million people in Ireland voting for abortion. It was an overwhelming moment. It was about abortion, but it was also about finally realising women's rights in Ireland and the fact that women's rights had been denied for so long. The campaign was run by women, it was led by women, and it was a campaign for all women. But something really remarkable happened on the ground to bring that radical social change. And there is now a whole generation of new activists who continue to campaign for women's rights and who continue to campaign for women's rights globally as well in Ireland. In Ireland we still have so many improvements to make for abortion. We still want, we want women to be able to access abortion services free from intimidation, which is what they are experiencing at the moment. And we also want to fully decriminalise abortion so that women's full reproductive, realize, reproductive rights can be realised. And also, we want women in the north of Ireland who are denied that access to have their full reproductive rights. So the fight is not over in Ireland and we still need your support. now and they're being actively contested. We were told that abortion was one of the most divisive issues, yet the persistent courage of women and the women's movement came together to bring about that change. We hope that Ireland's achievement can be a beacon for all of you who are here today to advance women's rights in Germany. But as feminists, we're all in this together until every woman everywhere can achieve her reproductive rights. So solidarity with you all today and let's keep the struggle going. Thank you. Thank you so much Rola. Thank you for coming over all the way from Ireland to join us today. Just want to say hi to Berlin Island Project.
Catholic Choice Solidarity, where are you? <laughs> Hi! They're one of the groups that supported this uh, struggle to repeal the 8th and they're still doing some great work supporting the campaign for Northern Ireland. So go and chat to them if you want to find out about it. Um, I'm going to do a quick translation or a quick summary, it's not easy. Um, Ola is one of three directors from Together for Yes, das ist ein Zusammenschluss von mehreren Organisationen, Pro-Choice und feministische Organisationen, die zusammen nach vielen Jahren Kampagnenarbeit es endlich geschafft haben, das Referendum zu gewinnen mit dem Ergebnis, dass Schwangerschaftsabbruch in Irland jetzt legal und zugänglich ist. Sie freut sich sehr, hier zu sein und sagt, dass Demos und solche Aktionen und Mobilisierung ein sehr wichtiger Teil von ihrem Kampf waren und von ihrem Erfolg. Und dieser Erfolg zeigt, dass es möglich ist, dass es machbar ist, solche restriktive Gesetze gegen Abtreibung zu kippen. Ähm, äh, als Aktivistin stehen sie zusammen mit uns und mit allen Feministinnen in Solidarität und wollen unterstreichen, dass solche Schritte nur zur Befreiung führen oder zum Erfolg führen, wenn sie reproduktive Rechte für alle erkämpfen. Das bedeutet Women of Color, LGBTU äh, äh, TUI Menschen, sorry, ich habe es nicht so mit Buchstaben, äh, Frauen mit Behinderung, Menschen aus allen Klassen, allen Re äh, Religionen. Ähm, der Zugang zu sicheren und legalen Schwangerschaftsabbruch ist ein Menschenrecht. Und wir wissen, dass sie erkämpft werden muss und dass, sie sehr, dass solche Rechte auch sehr schnell bedroht werden. Und als Feministinnen müssen wir diese Rechte verteidigen. Ähm, sie hat auch sehr viele wertvolle Hintergrundinfos zu der Kampagne genannt und wie alle Menschen für diese Kampagne zusammengekommen sind. Und äh, hat erzählt, dass Frauen in Irland oder ungewollt Schwangere in Irland schon immer abgetrieben haben, aber äh, dafür ins Ausland mussten oder unter den schwierigsten Bedingungen. Ähm, diejenigen, die ohnehin benachteiligt waren, sind diejenigen, die dann am meisten darunter leiden. Und seit 1980 haben sie in Irland dafür gekämpft, äh, Schwangerschaftsabbruch zu legalisieren und mussten über Jahre diese Bewegung aufbauen. 2018 hatten sie endlich den Erfolg, 1,4 Millionen Menschen haben mit Ja gestimmt. Jetzt haben sie... Dafür kann man schon ruhig klatschen. Jetzt haben die Abortion on Request und es gibt noch viel zu tun, unter anderem äh, in Nordirland, wo äh, Schwangerschaftsabbrüche immer noch illegal sind. Und sie hoffen, dass wir Irland äh, auch als Vorbild sehen und dass wir weiterhin zusammen kämpfen können für sexuelle und reproduktive Rechte hier und auf der ganzen Welt. Dankeschön.